Losing both of your coordinators in the same off season is never a good thing. You always want to have some consistency when you head into your next season. Well, Boston College just learned this weekend that their defensive coordinator is going to be heading to the NFL. Is this bad news for the Eagles? We're going to get into that on today's Locked On Boston College. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on BC, I'm your host, AJ Black. LinkedIn Jobs is our sponsor for today's episode. They help you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. Well, big news this weekend, and I, I got to say pretty unexpected news, as defensive coordinator Tim Lokabu uh, was announced to be the new outside linebackers coach for the Carolina Panthers. This comes after three seasons with BC. Uh, he had you know experience before that, but... He was considered an up-and-coming coach when he came to Boston College, and listening to a lot of the national analysts, they were very high on his potential moving forward. This move was a surprise, I, and especially the bigger part of the surprise of his decision is where he's going, not where he's going. Going to the NFL seemed like a logical move for him, but the position for where he's going. Lokabu is going to be the outside linebackers coach for Carolina. Now, if you were like me, you're like, what? Doesn't that seem like a, a a step down? Is he really that eager to get out of Boston College, a team that went three and nine last year? Could be. That could be part of it, of course. But also, you have to look at what Carolina's doing and, and think kind of long term. The Panthers just hired Frank Wright. Uh, you know, longtime head coach, not longtime, head coach of Indianapolis. Many people think is a, a slam dunk hire for the Panthers. Carolina also has done an amazing job of filling the staff behind him, hiring Thomas Davis to run their offense. And uh, they have another big time young defensive coordinator, uh, Averro, I believe is his last name, coming in to be the defensive coordinator. Behind them, they've been hiring tons of positional coaches that have really caught people's eyes as well. D'Angelo Hall, who has not coached before, I don't believe, um, is going to be their secondary coach. So, if you look at where the, the pins drop here, where where, where the, the cards lie, it would look like to me that Lokabu, it maybe he just wanted to get out of BC. We don't, we're never going to find that out. That Carolina gives him an, an opportunity to be part of something special. Because right now, let's be honest, doing anything at BC is, is a couple years away from anything being special. And it's more closely aligned with something disastrous happening again. So, you even if the pay may be less, and we don't know what the pay was at BC or what he's going to get paid with Carolina, he has the potential to go ahead and do some special things with Carolina. And you know, if they're off, if their defensive coordinator with the Panthers decides, you know, he he does really well, you know, that would lead to him probably bringing Lokabu with him and, and giving him the chance to be a defensive coordinator somewhere else. Just one way of looking at that. Now. For Boston College, what does this move mean? What does this move for Boston College? It's more upheaval. And I worry when I hear this, that this is now the second coordinator. And we've talked each year having like their own specific, um, you know, difficulties that the, that the team had to face. In 2020, it was the, it was the pandemic which all teams faced 2021 was the quarterback when Phil Dracovic got hurt against UMass and 2022 was the offensive line. I am just hoping that losing your offensive coordinator, which they chose to do, they fired John McNulty to hire, you know, Steve Shimko and um, Rob Chudzinski, which we haven't heard their official hire dates yet, but uh, my sources have told me that they're already practicing with the team or practicing and doing, you know, doing the work that offensive coordinators, I know they can't practice with them right now, but you know what I mean? Lokabu is a bit more of a surprise because you didn't expect this. So, but again, I go to this, you have to adjust. This is not a time where a team can make excuses. Jeff Halfley can't make excuses here because every team, teams have this happen all the time. Yeah. Does it stink that it happened two weeks before spring practice starts? Absolutely. 
Does it stink that it's both of your coordinators and you lost an offensive line coach? Sure. But look at other teams. Look at Syracuse. They lost a coach. Look at, you know, you go up and down the lines. NC State, they lost coaches. Every team does this. Good teams lose it because teams poach their players, uh, coaches. Bad teams do it because they want to get rid of those coaches. BC is kind of in the middle. They lost one because they wanted to get rid of them. And one coach went someplace else that was uh, more up their alley. So that's the case there. Now, is Luke Lokabu replaceable? I think so. I, I mean, I liked some of the things he did, but is he is he like this crushing loss for Boston College? I don't think so. I mean, he had a good defense in 2021. You look at the like you look at the statistics from 20 in 2020 and 2022, and it doesn't to me strike as a guy that like would be devastating to a program to lose. Last year they were 101st in, in scoring defense. A lot of that, again, as I said before in this program, ha- is it has to do with their offense not giving the defense any rest. So I, I, I do say see that a little bit, but like I don't I don't see Lokabu as a guy like this is such a hot shot defensive coordinator that is such a big impact on this program that this t- this team can't fix this. I do I do think he's good. I thought he had a potential to to do some things here with this program. Um, but on the on the recruiting trail, like obviously defensive coordinators and offensive coordinators, they make connections with recruits, but they don't um, they don't they're not like the main guys. It's usually the positional coaches that are are the are the main recruiters. So you don't I wouldn't say he's like a a, a loss on recruiting on the field. You know, I think as what I've heard from when I talked to BC, the defense is Halfleys. You know the halfway is going to not change anything drastically. So if you're looking for a new odd defense coordinator to come in and, and drastically throw things around and change how they do things, it's not because Lokabu was following what Halfley wanted to do. Halfway's a defensive mind. Uh, and he, he had the first say with that. So I don't think there will be any major changes coming up next year. Now, the big question remains though, with two and a half weeks before the start of spring practice, spring practice starts on March 3rd. That's coming up very quickly. And as we've seen with the offensive coordinator position, it took them forever to hire. And I mean, they still haven't even announced it yet. I know that they it, there's guys in place, but they haven't announced it yet. How quickly can they move on to hire a new person to take this position? In a moment, I'm going to discuss some of those names. I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen. And I'm going to tell you what I think this defense will look like in 2023. You're not going to want to miss that. Now, in a moment, let's talk about our friends over at LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a proud partner of Locked On BC. And when you are a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job posts, company, and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. Identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them for fast and free. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Locked on BC here, AJ Black. So as I said, big news here this weekend, BC is out a defensive coordinator. They have to hire a, someone to run their defense and Tem Lokabu is off to the NFL. So this asks the question, the begs the question, given the timing of this, where does BC go? Now, I know there's going to be a lot of names thrown around and we'll get into some of those in just a moment. But my sources have told me that most likely they're going to be going internal for this. There is not enough time for them to hold interviews, to do all that kind of stuff. And I think when we get into this in a moment, there's a guy on the roster, on the staff that needs this promotion. 
And so when I'm looking at the names, you've got guys like Sean Duggan, a nice up and coming coach, 247 Sports, who I worked for, for two years straight, had him in their 30 under 30 coaches list. So he's thought of very highly. He's done a nice job recruiting. Uh, um, you know, he's worked for a couple of different programs like Ohio State and Hawaii. He's got experience, but he's younger. He's not a guy. I, I think he's a couple of years away from taking a role like that. And honestly, let's be honest, has the linebackers taken the jump that you want them to do? I don't I don't think so. So I don't think I don't think it'll be I don't think it'll be Duggan. The other name to look for is Vince Ogabase, who is their defensive line coach. Uh, he has experience, uh, you know, he's a player at Duke. He worked for the 49ers and UCLA as defensive line coach. But just like Duggan, younger coach with not the experience. Like he hasn't been a defensive coordinator before. So those are two guys right there. If they're going to go internal, they, if you promoted them, they would be first on the job. That's kind of like the Chris Snee thing for me, right? When we're talking about the offensive line coach, I didn't want them to bring Chris Snee in because – yeah, he's a he's a, a a graduate of BC. People think very highly of him, but he hadn't coached before. I you, BC at this point cannot af- afford to make a positional coach the with no experience their defensive coordinator, which leaves one guy on the staff if they're going to go internal, and that's Azar Abdulrahim. And this one checks off a lot of the boxes, right? This is a guy that a lot of folks have really uh, spoke highly of over the last couple of years. He's done an excellent job in the recruiting trail. Um, he's one of the ace recruiters for that DMV or district of Columbia, Maryland and Virginia area. Uh, and his secondary has played pretty well, uh, get all things considered, you know, in 2021, they were third, I think in the country in past yards allowed. Um, and you know, he's done a nice job with what he has. He's also been a defensive coordinator. You know, he in high school, he was a high school coach before he started in college at Collegiate Collegiate Friendship Academy in Washington, where he was defensive coordinator. That doesn't really count. And then he took a mild step up to UMass, where he was defensive coordinator before he came to BC. So he's run a defense. I don't care. I honestly like, I know UMass's defenses were atrocious, probably even really bad, probably when he was there too. Um, But he's run a defense. He's done that kind of. End, end of the ball. So I think to me, a Azar would be a, a home run. He's already the associate head coach. So he's got a leadership role above what he does already. Um, I, I think you would probably lose that position because I think becoming a defensive coordinator uh, would be a step up. And, and this would help keep him on your roster. I know earlier this year, I had been getting buzz that Michigan might have been interested in bringing him on as like a safeties coach because some of these big schools just have like a billion coaches. And I know he was one name that they were looking at. Getting him into a defensive coordinator role would keep him more locked in, it, 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 you know, especially if the if Halfley has more success next year. So I think it's going to be AAR. That's my guess, especially if they're going to go internal. But they, you know, maybe there's a name out there that my source didn't know about that's external. Uh, and then they would go from there. But if AAR does take that job, if, if Raham takes it, that would mean they would need a secondary coach. Cause I think, uh, well, they, you know, they've had defensive coordinators co-teach different things, but you know, you, you have the spot to do an, another coach, and especially with, uh, with recruiting, you want someone to come in and can, that can recruit the way he could. Uh, so I, I think you, you'd bring in the secondaries coach or defensive backs, but you know, he could probably teach it for the spring ball until you get somebody on campus that you really want. Now, I know there's some people who have some thoughts, and I'm going to get into them uh, right here. So Chris says, bring in Al Washington as defensive coordinator. I said this on Twitter. I don't think BC has a chance to bring in Al Washington, period. Um, he's the defensive line coach right now for Notre Dame. I know a lot of BC fans really want Al back. Um, I I think he can – He's he's at the point – where, yeah, he's a defensive line coach, but he's going to be able to pick and choose where he can be a defensive coordinator. And, you know, I don't want to be the negative Nancy here, but like, yeah, you know, I, I've been more positive about BC, but there's a people are thinking, and I know a lot of you think it too, right? That there's a potential that Halfley's not going to be successful next year. Why would you uproot yourself from Notre Dame, a program that's doing really well, to go to a program where you could be out of a job in a year? I ha, Washington wouldn't make sense for me. And I know, I know he has experience with Halfley too. I just, I just don't see him uprooting himself again to go to BC for this. I think after this year, he's, he's going to be in the talk for 
defensive coordinator positions at bigger schools. And I think he's going to be able to choose where he wants to go. Um, Marty party wants to say is AAR all sizzle and no steak. Um, maybe, you know, I, I, I think he's had success as defensive backs coach, uh, uh, the recruiting trail. He's the guy, like whenever I talk to kids and, you know, as part of two, four, seven, I talk to a lot of recruits and anyone in the DMV area, he's like front and center, no matter what position they play, they all talk about him when he is around, uh, you know, uh, recruits that play the secondary position around the country. Cause that's the other role he does. He does, you know, DMV and secondary and, you know, half he loves to get defensive backs in here. He's again, the big name that they all talk to um, on, on the field. I, I feel like, I feel like the secondary has been solid and not a, a hindrance. Like maybe you would say with like the linebackers. So I don't think of him as no sizzle. I mean, all sizzle. I think he's done enough. That would be fine. Um, and I think a lot of folks have been asking, I mean, I believe it was the end of last year. It was all the fans were all uh, asking for AAR to take over the defense anyway. So, because some people just didn't like Lokabu. So you're going to get what you want. Um, but again, this is all going to be Halfley's defense, right? I, I wonder how much he's going to have his hand on everything on that defensive end um, with probably Rob Chizinski running all of the offensive end. So you've got, I mean, the, the positive end, you can look at it, right? If you bring an AAR and he's kind of young and he's still learning how to be a, a, a power five defensive coordinator, um, you could, um, you know, have Halfley kind of running the defense with Chibzinski, who's got a ton of experience running the offense, and, and then you could have your answer right there. Um, Marty also says Don Brown. Don Brown's not leaving UMass. <laughs> I think that's his last stop. And uh, that would be a step back. I mean, he's a head coach right now. I don't think he'd go backwards to go be BC's defensive coordinator. Um, so, and then Marty says, sure, see, recruits like him, but other than Bowery, most of his recruits have fizzled. Um, fair point. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of the fizzling came from St. Francis Academy, as I said on last week's show. Um, we'll have to wait and see what some of these other kids are doing because he's he's big on a lot of kids. Um that we've seen around this campus. So that's kind of how it's going to go. And we'll, I will keep my ears to the ground. I've been talking to my sources about this, this uh, new hire and I will have it up on Eagle Insider. And if you want more info, become a member on Eagle Insider. It costs you a cup of coffee a month. Um, and you get best, it's the best way to support my work. And uh, it was a great BC community over there too. If you guys like chatting, like you do in our box here, uh, come on over, uh, become part of 247's uh, family, and we'd love to see you over there. Now, in our final segment, we're going to wrap things up and talk about all the things that happened this weekend, including some good old UMass beatdowns, which I love. We'll get into that in just a moment. But before we do that, if you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays, and I know my goal is to eat a little healthier this year. And if you're like me where you want to eat healthier but don't want to compromise taste, then, man, I just got the thing for you. you got to try Built. It's healthy, and it's actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious that you'll think they're good for you. You won't think they're good for you. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're 100% covered in real chocolate. I'm just telling you. I love them. My family loves them. My kids, I got to keep them away from my box of bars because they are constantly trying to steal them from me. Now, <clears throat> you don't need to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about ordering on Built.com, but now you can get it at Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and creams, double chocolate, or coconut puffs. And if you're close to Sam's Clubs, run in and make a, grab a 13-bar box with our hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. You can thank me later. And head, of course, always head over to Built.com. Use promo code LOCK15. You're going to save 15% off your order. All right, locked on BC AJ Black. Let's talk about this weekend's basketball game. Now we haven't had a chance um, to have a nice win in Tallahassee since 2007. Crazy, it's been that long. But BC goes down and takes control. I mean, they were in control of this game for most of it. I mean, near the end, Florida State started making a bit of a run. But BC had the lead from basically the beginning to the end of this game, and. Again, the first it was a tale of two halves. So the first half, BC, I, I, they, they, I don't know if it's like the shoes they're wearing or the hoop that they have, but it seems like every now and then 
they they get on these runs where they are like they're like the Golden State Warriors from three point range. And the biggest one of them was Quentin Post, who more and more I think is going to be find a role in the NBA because the guy is seven feet tall. He can do things underneath, but he can stretch the floor too. He was hitting shots from way outside three point range and went five for five for three pointers in that first half. I just think I think to him like there's always going to be a role for a guy that big that can shoot like that. And he may not be a star, but he could be a guy from the bench that some team grabs. Uh, but another big game from post. So the first half, BC jumps out to a 16-point lead. They look totally in control. Florida State looked like a mess. But then the refs took over. And I'm not going to blame the refs, but this game stunk to watch because there were – Florida State, I think, went to the line 34 times in this game. And it wasn't – it was lopsided, but it wasn't super lopsided because BC got to the line a whole bunch too. It was just foul, 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 foul. And, like, they were just calling everything. It was like, let the guys play. And so the second half, Florida State, uh, you know, they're getting to the line. I think they scored 60 points and 34 of them – or 65 points and 34 of them came from the free throw line. Um they just kept getting into the line and BC's off. They, they're deep to the credit of the Seminoles credit. Their defense started showing up too. And they start down post, but it was another player that really stepped up in that second half. And that was Devin McLaughlin, who I think had 12 points and he went eight for eight in the second half in the free throw line. You know, as a BC fan, someone who watches this team for years, even it's not just a, a grant thing. I feel like it was during Christian time and, and Steve Donahue too. This team has always been like, one of the worst free throw shooting teams, but they shot 85%. They did a nice job and McLaughlin did a nice job. Love the play of Devin McLaughlin. Kid is just confident. He, he plays like a big man and looks like a big man out there. Um, I, I, I think he's going to develop into something really nice, like a 15, seven guy every night, like 15.7 rebounds once he really gets himself comfortable, uh, but big game. And then, so down the stretch, Florida state just kept chewing away. And I was like, you know, we're getting near the end. And it's like six points. I'm like, they're going to lose this game. You know, you, you've watched enough BC games to know that feeling in your gut when they're like, they feel like they were on top of it. And then the, the other team just starts corroding their, their lead. But to BC's credit, they held on just enough to win. Uh, and that's their seventh ACC win of the, of the year. And again, I said the first ACC win, uh, win in Florida state since 2007, which is crazy. I was just out of grad school then. Um, but a win's a win. Next up is UVA. Good luck. <laughs> um, they're one of the best teams in the country. That would be a massive uh, upset, but it's at home. So, you know, students are there. So maybe maybe they get some home cooking at Conti for him. Um, but see, it always seems like, you know, that three three point luck that they get, it's always on the road. And when they get back to Conti Forum, everything bounces out. So we'll have to wait and see if that's going to be the case. But we're going to wrap things up. Northeastern, Northwestern beat BC women's lacrosse. A uh, close game. It was a five versus three seed. So BC was a three seed. Uh, they came back. Jen Majid had a goal uh, to bring it within one with like two minutes left, but they couldn't put it away. Uh, so that was a tough loss for them. Uh, but the last thing I want to talk about is uh, BC men's hockey, who uh, had their annual tradition of uh, smacking the crap out of UMass this weekend. No matter what UMass is doing, you can always count on BC to beat the crap out of them. And that's exactly what happened this weekend. BC scored five goals in the first period on Friday and won seven to three and then went to the Mullen Center and beat them again. So just when BC hockey looks like they're dead in the water, they didn't look all that great in the bean pot. They've been losing a lot of games. You just throw UMass. I don't care if they're national contender UMass or UMass this year that looks like crap. And BC will always find a way to win. So nice win there for the Eagles. Two, two wins as they're getting ready for the Hockey East Tournament. Uh, and we'll get into everything else uh, on tomorrow's show. I'll probably try to get a little into BC baseball. I don't like to talk a ton about it, but I know folks want to do it. So I'll do a little quick update on them. I'm recording here on Sunday afternoon. I'm away for the week. So I got to record early. Uh, so hopefully you guys like this time, but um, we'll be doing that at this time all week because I'm on vacation. So thank you all for listening. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, just go to YouTube. You get all these videos uh, sent directly to you. We have a kick butt uh, comment section full of fans that love to talk BC sports. And we hope to see you all there. Follow me on Twitter at AJBlack underscore BC. And we'll all see you again soon. Take care.